Engine Works Entertainment is proud to present Sitting on a Tailgate Podcast with your host, DJ Big Country. You have reached the Redneck Hotline. If you would like to talk to a fellow Redneck, please dial one and then say one because we're not going to know what you dialed unless you say it. If you are married to it. Don't let me startle you. I'm just doing the rebel yell here to kind of kick things off. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. We're going to kick things off here. It's a Wednesday night right here. It's sitting on the tailgate. I am your host, DJ Big Country. We got a special guest in the studio tonight. The president of Action Works LLC and my boss, Mr. Clark Evans. How you doing, sir? Hey, doing great. That's good. We got a lot of talk, a lot of a lot of stuff. Damn, I can't even talk tonight. I'm stuttering. Must have had too much moonshine. We got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Uh, first thing we're going to kick off. Uh, I know I always said that I'd never talk about politics, but I just got to talk about it. <clears throat> and that's why I brought Clark in to help me because he is good at that stuff and he knows what he's talking about. We're talking about the city of Orlando moving up their elections to November of 2015 instead of 2016. And their excuses that they're given is because, well, everybody votes on November, so why can't we do ours early? <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't believe that. I think it's an election stipulation. I think it's a it's a game changer. I think uh, I think they're playing dirty because that only gives them that only gives anybody because nobody really officially has said who's going to run against them, right? So that only, that would only give them six months to even try to put a campaign together, and that ain't going to happen. What do you think about that, Clark? Yeah, they really only have about five months uh, with the with the change because they're moving it up that far. But uh, you know what they're what they're doing was the state legislature they moved the the presidential primaries up, um, All right? Or forward, you know, they they took it from January up to March, and uh, so the the election people want didn't they thought it was too close, so right. they asked to move the date, but they didn't they they weren't talking about moving it five six months. <laughs> right? Yeah, that yeah. To me, that's a big stretch. And like I said, somebody had brought this to my attention and uh, was uh, telling me about it, so I figured that'd be a good topic to talk about on our show tonight. Um, also, people out there, listeners, if you want to uh, chat in with us, um, just go to Spreaker.com fo- uh, forward slash show forward slash sitting on a tailgate. You can find us and you can also chat with us live on the show on uh, the chat here on the screen. So if you want to chime in on uh, what we're talking about or if you got any comments or questions or concerns about the show, you can hit us up at actionworksmusic at gmail.com. Um, yeah, so I've, I I don't know what Orlando's up to. I, uh, first of all, I mean, from what I've been reading in the papers and tabloids and news media and stuff like that, Orlando's hurting because... I guess they're short a couple million dollars, especially for the new the new stadium that they want to put up for the Orlando Soccer League, plus the fact that they're short $30 million on the renovation of the Citrus Bowl. And now, I mean, I've been saying this for a long time, and I've been saying, people, they're going to get you. Orlando's going to get you to end up paying. The, we're talking about taxpayers. They're going to end up getting the taxpayers to pay all this extra money if the SunRail doesn't fly. Now the Sunrail has been I think it's been it's been running on fumes if you ask me because I know they got the same situation down in Miami that runs from Miami to Fort Lauderdale but that their their train system down there only runs a couple days a week cuz they can't keep enough people on it to ride it to keep it afford and then they want to build a fat, they want to build a, a, a bullet train from the airport out to High Drive and also from airport to well, Tampa the, Well now they're extending the Sunrail down into Osceola County. Right. Well, yeah, that that's just announced that. Yeah, and that was predicted. Now I'm I'm just kind of curious. I'm wondering if that's the extra thirty million that they need, um, or I think it's about thirty million. I, thirty million. I don't know exactly how much, but I know they're going to start charging Orlando City and Orlando taxpayers because, and everybody was talking about this. They said this was going to happen because of the fact that 
it was a split decision. It was half and half. Half people wanted it and half people don't. I don't care what anybody says. People are going to keep their vehicles. They don't like to be stuck someplace without having to have without having a ride. I mean, that's just my opinion. I, I, you know, and especially if you work the late shift, like if you have to stay work a couple hours later, whatever, after work, them trains only one certain time. So if you can't get home, you're shit out of luck because you'd have to call somebody to come and get you, especially if you're downtown Orlando. That's right. But um, it's it's cheaper for me to, to drive my car. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it yeah. is, and you don't, and 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 and, if, and and God forbid if you have somebody that has an accident, you know, gets hit by a train or whatever. There, I, I don't see, I, I can't tell you how many, how many times it was at least ten times when they first started the sunrail. There must have been ten accidents on the on on the tracks, and some of them. I mean, of course, they were minor ones, but still, that delays the train system. What at least thirty minutes, sometimes maybe forty five to ninety. Several hours when they have a wreck. The biggest problem with the Sunrail is, you know, the federal government came in and helped fund it. Right. But it, that only lasts for a few years. Yeah. And then they stop, and then the people that are going to continue to fund it, because the ridership doesn't cover it. So the people who are going to continue to fund it is each county that it tr- it goes, goes through, through yeah. will have to pay for the, for the extra cost. Yeah, that's what I figured. I mean, that's I've been saying that for a long time. I, I figured that if they don't get the city of Orlando to pay for it, you know, each individual county is going to end up paying for it because they're not making enough money, especially. Well, the only time they make any kind of noticeable um, amount of people that ride the sun rail is when they have their free days, like when they had the holidays. I mean, oh, yeah, you go down to Deberry at this train, the uh, station down there, Deberry, the, the parking lot's packed. It is plum packed every time you get a free day because everybody wants to come ride down into Orlando and check it out and hang out there and then catch a ride back. But when it comes to a regular working day, you know, and, and it's like ten, it, it it costs a person like ten bucks to ride it if they was to ride it twice a day, for a whole week, and that's that's that the ten twenty thirty forty that's forty bucks figure forty bucks, in tolls, when right now gas is so cheap and I got I drive a full size truck it only cost me forty five to fill my truck up right now, right you know compared to what it was when it was four dollars a gallon so, uh, but. Um, I don't know. What do you think of these? Uh, what do you think of the uh, the new uh, the um, Ferris wheel? I call it the Ferris wheel <laughs> down in Orlando. Well, that's what it is, isn't it? I, I guess. I guess these. I mean, these uh, them uh, cars that they got on this thing. I mean, they look like a damn you know bedroom. I mean, they're ten by ten. They got they got internet access in them. They got music playing in them. They got phones in them. So well, I, mean, I got what, I gotta go down and check it out. I mean, what's the purpose of going up in a Ferris wheel just to use? And I, and I, I kid you not, people. I kid you not. There will be people that will actually do this. They will take a ride in the Ferris wheel just to say they wrote it. They'll go up in it just to use the internet and the cell phone just to see how it how it works. And that's just I, I don't know. Well, it's right. what four hundred feet up in the air. Four hundred feet, and then they're going to build the tallest roller coaster here. Have you seen the pictures of that? No, I haven't. It looks like um, Who, who's going to do um, that? I don't know. It's funny because uh, my sister is married to a uh, a gentleman that is one of the uh, electrical engineers that does a lot of work for the theme parks and stuff around here, and a lot of them in Japan too. And they actually have the contract on that, and uh, it's uh, it's going to be kind of like um, you know. Uh, you know the uh, hotel that's down there near Wet and Wild that kind of looks like a tube, like a cylindrical tube? Right. It's going to look like that, but only five or 600 feet up. It's going to have two bars, a restaurant, and something else up on top. And then it's got a three, uh, let's see, a three-seater or a four-seater. Anyways, I think it holds like to six people on a roller coaster. It, it looks like something that we bought when we were kids that you just let it drop and it goes... Well, our 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 tourism is up again this year, and that's that's good in that it keeps our our taxes low. Yeah, it's <laughs> good. It's good. But my my beef with that is though is the fact that there's still the jobs are not plentiful like they used to be back ten fifteen years ago. I don't care what anybody says. The news media can sit there and tell you all day all night that oh yeah our our jobs are doing good and we're putting people back to work and stuff. Bull crap. 
the only jobs that are available is construction work jobs here in Florida. Central Florida is hospitality because entertainment is kind of gone downhill a little bit too now, but, um, yeah, the, the jobs that need to be are not available for, <coughs> excuse me, the average working person. And that's what, that's what aggravates me because. Well, no, and they're, they're not going to be for a while. No, I mean, we're, we're just barely crawling back from from where we were you know well, it, it's a crawl and we're, we haven't recovered the economy is is stalled at the bottom and and we're slowly crawling out of this hole we've dug for ourselves but you know quite frankly until until we get a change in federal government uh nothing's going to change as far as the economy you look yeah. at the you look at the employment participation rate and it's it's the worst it's been in 30 years oh yeah yeah. So that's that's way worse than just you know ten years ago. Well, yeah, and it's and it's and it all starts with the government, you know, and the higher up authorities too. And I, I know you don't like uh, what's his face, so uh, <laughs> we won't say we won't say nothing about him. Heaven forbid something might happen. But uh, here's another quick uh, info for y'all's out there. I'm I'm telling you, and mark my words on this. You can quote me on it if you want, but I would say. Next 10 years, maybe 15, I think all FM radio stations will either be null and void or getting ready to hand out the door because the Internet's going to take it over. I think web radio is doing a hell of a... Well, Finland. <clears throat> I just read uh, an article the other day that Finland has shut down all of their FM radio stations over there because it's more feasible and more economical for them to do everything digitally. They do everything digitally download on the Internet. So uh, I think they said it saves them like $52 million a year. And you were saying something else, too, earlier to me about uh, some other countries that were doing the same thing. Yeah, there's there's uh, several countries over in Europe that have set uh, end dates for FM radio. They're coming up this year. Yeah. And they're taking back the radio signal, you know, the radio waves and they won't be. There just won't be any more FM or right. any radio as far as broadcast because they're all going digital. Right, and I think the reason that you can find most radio stations on the internet right now, like um, well, like we broadcast here through, uh, we broadcast on iHeartRadio too. You find a lot of r local radio stations on iHeartRadio. Um, they're all simulcasting. So what they're doing is they're broadcasting their regular daily shows and stuff like that, and just simulcasting through iHeart. So that's how you hear about them. But once their FM goes, and I, I think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be so much the FCC telling them to shut down. I think it's going to be the fact that it's because they can't make no money because it's a known fact that any, any music, music right now is so cheap to download off the internet. It's, I mean, you know, it's just impossible. You can't even go to a store anymore really and buy a whole music CD for less than what you could download just the songs that you want on the internet because i mean that's what i used to do when i was a kid it wasn't the fact that i wanted the whole cd it was just there's you had to buy the whole cd just to get the few songs you wanted i'm surprised those stores are still open oh jeez <laughs> Seminole mall you know still has oh, yeah. a well FYI now here, here's store, and I'm here's like, another fact too. <laughs> here's another fact too that i read too um yesterday was it yesterday the day before um, Sears is reporting shutting down 85 stores this year alone. J.C. Penney's is reporting shutting down 45 stores just in this year alone. And Kmart's, there's not another, there's not a single Kmart around here except for I think the one in Orange City is still there. Um, mom's, my mom told me the other day, yesterday, she had to go all the way out to Claremont just to uh, go to big, uh, just go to Kmart. And Kmart is the one that bought out Sears. So I think they're going to get rid of the Kmart. They're shutting down certain stores for Sears and see everything is going to go drop ship. It's going to be warehouse. I was out, get this, I was out in Hain City the other day. Well, no, this a couple weekends ago. I was out heading that way doing a, a wedding out there. And I turned down this one road and I just happened, I went right by the Central Orlando Distribution Center for Amazon.com. Those warehouses were freaking huge it had to have been 30 40 50 acres easy out there of nothing but warehouses so that's where that's where it they're, is they're booming have, have you have you heard about the amazon button no they've got these little buttons that you can put all over your house 
wherever you have supplies, you know, like toilet paper. So you put one in your bathroom or, oh, in, oh. or next to your fridge, you know, with different. And what you do is when you're running low on something, you know, it'll it'll have an uh, on the button will be a picture of like Tide detergent. Right. You put in your laundry room. Uh -huh. So when you run in low, you just push the button uh -huh. and it connects through your Wi-Fi and orders it. And then within two days, it's drop shipped at your front door. <laughs> That's just pure damn laziness. <laughs> and then they want to blame McDonald's on making our kids fat because, oh, we eat too many hamburgers or we ate too many French fries. It's, it's, it's not the fact that the food they eat is the damn kids don't get out and do anything. You know, I mean, my son, Danny, he I drag him out of the house every now and then if I can. He's he's stuck on games. I mean, what's his uh, call to duty? That's his famous one now. I mean, as soon as he comes home from school, that's exactly where he goes. Boom, right to the TV and doesn't leave it until he goes to bed. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We're just talking about politics here, people. Hey, if you got any questions or comments about our show, you can hit us up, actionworksmusic at gmail.com. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, oh, yeah. Um Tell everybody about your 400-pound friend that you uh, rode bikes with the other day. Oh, yeah. I was cruising on my bike down the Seminole Bike Trail, and uh, it was it was after dark, and so I didn't have much light out. But I'm cruising along, and all of a sudden, I see this black shadow cruising along beside me. It scared me for a second. I thought I was seeing stuff, and mm -hmm. I looked over there and didn't see anything. Uh -huh. I was like, okay, it's the shadows and the light playing tricks on my eyes, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, so I look over again, and I, I see this bouncing black shadow just running along beside me. And I go, oh, my God, that's a was it Was it that dark to where you couldn't see him? I mean, was it dark, dark? Yeah, it was, was like it? 10 o'clock at night. Oh, what and the then, hell are you doing riding your bike then, on the trail at 10 o'clock at night? <laughs> then he cuts in front of me, and he runs down the trail right in front of me. Of course, then he gets in front of my light, you know, right. the light on front of my bike. And I follow him, and he's, I'm not gaining, I'm lo he's losing me, mm -hmm. and I'm doing probably, you know, I picked it up as fast as I could, I'm probably doing 15 miles an hour. And he was out and running. And he's you. slowly out, ran, ran for about 100 yards, and then ducked into the woods on the other side. Wow. <laughs> that was pretty cool. See, yeah, that would be, see, that's something, see, I'd, I'd, be, I'd be trying to ride my bike and taking a picture at the same time. You know, one of them GoPro. That's what you needed. You need, you need a it. you need a GoPro camera on your bicycle. Yep. Because the next bear you run into, it might be an eight hundred pound you know bear saying, "Hey man, give me a ride." He was big, big, fuzzy <laughs> black furry ball. That's too funny. That's 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 funny. Um, let's see what else uh, we got going on here. Um, well, let's see. Um, our show, we're gonna uh, we're looking for sponsors. If any uh, corporations or uh, companies would like to uh, uh, sponsor us, um, I promise it's real cheap. Um, you can contact me, actionworksmusic at gmail dot com, um, or you can contact Clark. What's your email, Clark? Something I can't remember exactly. Four six eight two. Clark four six eight two at gmail dot com. So if you wanna if you wanna contact him, um. But like I said, you can probably reach both of us at actionworksmusic at gmail dot com. That's probably the best place to get a hold of us. But uh, um, we're doing a special right now. Uh, 250 bucks will get you a whole year of advertisement with our station here, our uh, radio web show here at Sitting on a Tailgate, uh, which is uh, done by WBCW Radio, uh, which is owned by ActionWorks LLC. So, uh, um, yeah, 250 will get you a whole year's advertisement on all of our websites, uh, on the show each week. Um Plus, if we decide to branch out, we may be doing another show, too, on another day during the week. So uh, something to think about. If you're interested, like I said, hit us up at actionworksmusic at gmail.com. Um, let's see. There was something else I was going to talk about. Um, uh, damn. Well, let's talk about Buddy Dyer. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Let's that's... talk about that for a minute. I think he's. I don't know. I, I with with this thing with the election, I really think that. I I think he's trying to get. Yeah, he's trying to. He's trying to. Hmm. Well, you were you were. Talk he's trying to pull an Eatonville. Well, <laughs> I'll you were, say that you were talking about all the uh, all the money that that we're blowing on stuff. 
by just moving that by not having that election at the same on the same date oh, that yeah. they're doing the primaries, it's going to cost them extra hundred grand. Just just to have their own special election. You know, they used to. Well, and you know that money's not coming out of his pocket. No. No. It's coming of out course. of my pocket. Well, yeah, pocket. exactly. And, they, plus, and plus it gives the fact that he can't, nobody else has, like I said, nobody else has time to run against him or right. to put a pink campaign well, against Well, it, it used to be that, that they had the election on the same day as the primaries. Nah. Uh-huh. And w- there's there's no good reason why not to do that. You know, you you have one election day, and you vote on the primaries, and you vote for your mayor, and you know the commission, you know the different people on the on the board there. But um, they want their own special day because basically what it is is voter suppression because yeah. they know everybody's going to show up for the primaries. Yeah, and they don't want everybody showing up. They just want their buddies showing up on their special day. They're, they're, the they're the ones. They're the ones that can take. <laughs> those are the people that they take to dinner or lunch and and buy them ten thousand yeah. dollar plates and say, and they, "Hey, go ahead and vote for me, and we'll get this done and over with, and not have to have yeah. a, a running mate." They're also worried that this next election cycle is going to be a big boom for the other party, and they're afraid that people that are going into the polls to vote a different way than they have in the past. Mm-hmm. Are going to vote down that ticket the same way when it comes to voting for the people that run Orlando? Well, I look at it this way: I don't, I don't care if you're a Republican or Democrat or Independent or whatever. I would say, if you're going to vote, if you're going to actually get out there and vote, vote for the person that you think can do the best job. Don't vote because of popularity. Think of, a, just vote for the for the person that can do the best job. Like, you know, I have always said this before. I don't care what kind of authority position you're in. I don't care if you're black, pink, purple, orange, or whatever, you know, and this, you know, if, if whatever color you are, so what, if you can do the job and I can trust you to do it, then I'll put you in that, you know, I'll vote for you and put you in that position. And if you don't know who, if you don't know who's running, you don't know anything about the candidates, then go ahead and stay home. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what happened with the presidency a few years ago. You know, everybody and their brother come out of the wall to vote and hasn't voted for 50, 60 years for voting for what? Just because it was a popularity vote? No, you know, you should have came out to vote because you felt that that person or that individual was going to do the job that you wanted to do. And, well, well, of course, that's what everybody thought was going to happen. TV changed politics in America. Oh, yeah. Big time. It, you know, and now it's it's like American Idol. Oh yeah, the report. But, well, yeah, the reporters, TV reporters. God bless them; they work hard and everything. But the bad thing about it is, they report on stuff that they're told to report on, like Fox News. Do you know that the White House does not lo- want Fox News in there at all because Fox News always tells the truth. Obama well, don't, don't like. Fox. I don't know about oh, that. Well, but, but I'm just saying, mm. Obama won't let him in there because. No. Yeah, Obama won't let him. Uh, anytime he has a press conference no, or whatever, they won't. They won't say. They won't read the script. They right. won't say what he wants them to say. But that's that's the way it is. But you know, I'm interested in what's going to happen in the next ten years with with internet because um, I think that's going to kill TV. Well, you're, yeah, you're talking about you're talking about digital radio killing. Yeah. Oh FM. yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's coming. Well, you know, half of everything I watch now is online. But well, but what killed what what I'm concerned? Well, they've already started with TV because now you got digital. You know, all your flat screens has got digital tuners in it. You have to have digital in order to be able to get local airwaves because you can't get analog anymore like you used to. Analog was the best. I, I analog was the best because it never broke down. You never had issues with it. You never had problems with it whatsoever. Um, but yeah, as far as TV, um, you can pretty much do. Well, there'll still be TV around. Um, but everything will be, it'll, it'll be, be streaming, it'll be streamed internet. through. Yeah. It'll be right. pumped through. Um, and you watch direct TV or bright house. No one, that's not bright house anymore. Somebody who brought out by who bought out bright house. Somebody just bought out bright house a couple. I, I didn't know. Month, yeah. That, month really? or two ago. Oh, uh, I, th- I want to say they're affiliated with Comcast. Because, well, they've owned, they've owned bright house. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. A long time. Well, yeah, it was somebody. Yeah. Supposedly somebody did a major shift in it or something like yeah. that. But, uh, I look to see DirecTV will have a hand in it because you know they're uh, other than them and um, and um, not Bright House, but uh, um, who's the other satellite company? Not DirecTV, but um, Dish. Dish Network, yeah. Yep. 
that's another you know that's another company. They're not. I don't think they're as big and as powerful as what Directv is, but uh, I think they might have their their hands in it somewhere too. But um, I don't know. It's it's going to be well. That's that's a satellite with satellite radio and satellite TV. I don't know long term. Yeah, but, it, but how, how stable they're going to be because. You know, well, but you, but you, Wi-Fi, we're getting Wi-Fi everywhere, right? Wi-Fi. Well, that's why I say satellite. Yeah, satellite radio or satellite communications will, run by Directv. They'll switch over to Wi-Fi and you know cell phones because there's a lot of cell phones that runs off of satellites. Right. So uh, yeah, sa- yeah, yeah. Satellites are still used. Um, they're they're a major player when it comes to uh, um, telecommunications and stuff like that, especially uh, overseas or you know out in the middle of the desert or whatnot. Um, because um, yeah, I tried to explain to my mom the other day that she was asking me the difference how a satellite phone and a regular cell phone works. I says, well, they both work kind of the same way, except for one cell phone works off of towers that are placed. I said, and the other one works directly off a of satellite. She says, well, I thought they all worked off of the airway. <laughs> so I was trying to, mom's actually come around. She's five she, miles away or 50,000 yeah. miles mom, away. Mom does, mom can understand pretty good. Dad, no. Dad's to the point, as long as he's got his CNN and football, he's good. He don't ever get on a computer. He don't even want to try to get on a computer. That's how my dad is. And uh, they've both been retired now quite a bit. Well, my dad just turned 80. And he's he's big time into his cell phone and his computer, and he's constantly trying to learn more about it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Dad, no, uh, Dad just he don't want no part of that stuff. And Dad, let's see, Dad's seventy, seventy eight now. Oh yeah, seventy eight. Yeah, both of them are in their seventies. But um, uh, well, what else? What else you want to talk about? We got about another couple more minutes here. Um, I ain't got nothing really happening. Here lately, um, the next big event that I got coming up is Biketoberfest. So I'm going to try to put something together for Fourth of July weekend. I don't know what what we can do. Maybe we can do a contest or something like that. But uh, again, uh, people, uh, listeners, if you know anybody, corporations, companies, mom and pops, lawn care business, anything, sponsor a couple hundred bucks, advertisement for a whole year. And uh, we can do great things. Matter of fact, we have plans to do great things here in the next year because we're just getting started. Um, we've been on air now since January. So uh, from uh, our statistics and uh, and our uh, numbers that we've been crunching, and uh, I think we're doing uh, I think we're doing real good. But um, so if they buy into that advertisement and we end up expanding and doing more, will that their advertisement that they bought be able to transfer over and oh yeah yeah they yeah, won't yeah, have yeah. To buy it. yeah 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 if yeah, you no, do yeah. another show right yeah they'll yeah. just get the benefit without right having to yeah pay anymore yeah they'll just get the benefit yeah it'll right. just it'll just carry over we don't yeah uh it's yeah it's more or less your sponsorship is is geared for the for wbcw radio as a whole it doesn't right. necessarily mean for one show or one station or the other station or another show it's for the whole thing so yeah You'll be on Facebook. You'll be on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you'll be on our website. You'll be on the air. Anytime we're on the air, advertisements, um, you know, voiceovers with your business name, um, logos. So, yeah, it, it pretty much covers anything. That's a really good deal. It is. It's I'm telling really you. a good deal. Well, Mr. Clark, I appreciate uh, you coming in tonight and uh, talking with us. Uh, um, of course, uh, we're going to be uh, bumping up the... Uh, the time slots here to hopefully an hour here in the next uh, couple weeks. I've been talking about that for a while now, but um, we want to thank you, sir, for sitting in with us today. And well, thank um, you very much for having me. I know you're a busy man, or at least you say you are. Hell, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you do half the time. So, uh, but uh, Jason Bears down the bike trail. <laughs> Jason Bears down the bike trail. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Well, folks, listen, we got to go. So uh, we appreciate y'all's listening and hanging with us. I'm DJ Big Country for sitting on a tailgate. Check us out every Wednesday night right here, 8 o'clock, same channel. We want to thank Mr. Clark Evans, the president of Action Works, for coming and sitting with us and hanging with us today. We want to bid you a farewell and have a good night and have a safe 
weekend. Bye-bye.